Hello, in this tutorial I'm going to go over the roadside object editor inside of UC WinRoad. To start with, I just have the default terrain file, and I've drawn in one of my roads that I have a custom road section on, just because I thought it would be better for this tutorial to show with this road. I'm going to go to my roadside object editor, which is this little button that has the green and the blue sign. Click on that, and you can see inside the roadside objects tab, we have a bunch of other tabs, signs, models, trees, markings, and roads. We're going to start with signs. Uh, you can see that in this is, it's completely full of signs, but the majority of them are foreign. So we're going to go and go to download. As long as you're connected to the internet, this is one good thing about UC WinRoad, it has a, a large database of files. So if we go to download, it opens up this download window, and you can see right on this side here, these are all the signs I can download. And we're going to go to USA signs, because I am in the USA. So let's go with a, uh, let's go first let's download a speed limit sign. So we'll click on that sign and then just click download. And then it connects to Formates FTP. See this only takes a few seconds to do. There it's downloading the file right now. And now once it's downloaded, then the file is already in my database as soon as I go back there. So I'm going to go back and look to see if I can actually find a stop sign, too. Let's click through these and see what other signs they have in here. They do not enter, wrong way. We can actually filter our results just by choosing stop. And there we go, here's our USA stop sign. You can also make your own uh, sign signs and bring them into this editor, which um, you, the sign needs to be black, pure black along the outside of it because black is transparent on these signs. But you are able to bring in your own image files and use them inside of the, the editor. So I'm going to back out of this download thing. And now at the very end, I should see my speed limit and my stop sign. So let's start with the stop sign. I'm going to make a new sign, or a new roadside object. In this one, I'm only going to do one. So the position of this sign, let's say, that's one thing that we didn't, we can, we can change in a minute. So we'll just, we'll just start it at zero so I can show you how we can change it. Uh, I only have, I have two roads in the file. I'm going to just put it on road one. This will put it on the left or the right side of the road. I'm going to put it on the right. And then the offset and the rotate, all of this will change the where the sign is. So for right now, we're just going to leave everything as default. We want the sign, this is make, saying the sign is going to be 2 by 2 meters. The back of the sign, you can pick the color you want to paint the back of the sign. And you want to make the black areas of the texture transparent. So we'll click that icon too, so these black areas will, will not be visible. Pull, and we also want a pull, and a stop sign pull is more like this. So we will also make the pole gray just like the, the other thing was, and we'll leave point one and see how that works. So now we can see right here we have one sign on road one. Now we'll go out of here. This is road one, so this is the very beginning. So this is my stop sign that I put on there. You can see that it has a pole. The back of the sign is gray, and it's at position zero, zero. So now if I click on the sign, it brings up the editor again, but just for this sign. So now. If, say, I wanted to, let me close this, say I wanted to put the sign right here. If you alt-click anywhere on a road, so I alt-click, position 252. So now if I go back to the beginning, or go back to where that stop sign is, click the stop sign again, and now I put the distance as 252, apply it, then the stop sign will move to where I want it to be. And also you can change, so say if I wanted it to be rotated 90 degrees, hit apply and that will rotate the sign 90 degrees I don't want that so I'm going to change that back also I can easily go left and right here so if I put left and apply now it's on the other side facing the other facing traffic so it faces traffic traffic automatically by default offset is the distance from the road so say I want this two meters off the road or that's into the road so the offset it starts the, the signs start at that very edge of your road so I will do that actually negative two and then it would move 
out that side of the road. So now, also, in this editor, you can easily change it for a group, too. So say I wanted 20 of these stop signs starting here at a distance of 50 meters apiece. Now I just applied that, and that easily I've created 20 stop signs at 50 meters apiece all the way down my road. But I actually don't want that, so I'm going to change it just back to one, apply to the group, and now I'm back to one stop sign. Okay, so now we're going to go over some other things that you can do that this is useful for. So we'll go back to our roadside objects thing. We can leave inside of signs, when, if we go to our stop sign and click on it, then that will show up there. Why don't we do a markings one, which is also... So say you have an HOV lane. You want a diamond to be on your road at, at various intervals. So we're going to click new here. Here's our diamond. We're going we're gonna to put it on road one, and we're going to put it on lane two. Lane one is always the, the, the lane, the, the, the rightmost lane if you're driving on the right, the leftmost lane if you're driving on the left. So it's always the, the, the lane farthest from the center line is lane one. So we want it to be lane two. We're going to leave this all default for now because we don't know what we're going to want on the right side of the road. And we're going to group this. So we're going to say we, we want 100 of these. Starting position zero and space them we'll space them 30 meters apart. Click OK and that automatically you can see inside this window has created a hundred or how many ever I picked, I don't even remember how many I picked but it has created that, met, yes it was a hundred. So now if I close this and go out you can see that along my road there is now starting at zero zero there is now a hundred of these diamond shapes but as of right now, when you're driving down, that actually looks a little bit squished. You generally, these diamond shapes for HOV lanes are really long, so from a driver's perspective, which is about to 1.5 meters, you'll be able to see that and it won't look squished like that. So if we click on this, just like before, actually I might have to go back to the, to the editor to do this because that, this one's actually on a road. So if I go back to this, now, if I click on any of these, and I can click, doesn't matter which one, click Edit, there's always an Apply to Group button. So if I want the marking not to be square, say I change this to, I want it to be 4 meters long instead of 2, so now it's going to be, and I don't want 100, 100 was a little much, or the spacing was probably a little bit off, why don't we change the spacing to 60. And now if I apply to Group, close, and go back out, now the diamond has been elongated from what it was before and now it's more of a diamond shape when I'm driving along the road this way. Okay, another thing that we can use the roadside object editor for is trees, but this is generally we I'll show you why we don't generally use this for trees, but I'll 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 just do it anyway. So I'm going to put a new tree in make it a group. We'll put 50 of them, starting position 0, spacing, actually I'm going to cut the spacing down because it's easier to see what I'm talking about. So now I have 30 or how many ever of these, I'm going to close this and go back out. This is the problem with using this for trees, is that it makes them all the same height. So when, you, when all the trees are the same height, it actually looks fairly unrealistic if you're driving along and every single tree is the same height. So one way that we generally will do this trees aren't hard to put down to do it manually generally we will put we're going to delete the groups we're going to delete all these trees for just to quickly show you if i go to the tree editor or go to the the model placement tool and go to trees and click on that same tree that i had this i have a you have the option of of a min max for your trees so i can do put this at five meters and max at 15 meters and then when I click this see it's not very hard just to click down wherever you want trees to be I mean five and 15 is a little extreme especially if it's along a row but I just wanted to show that that this puts trees in at different heights so it's putting them in varying along the way generally speaking you wouldn't want it to be a 10 meter gap in between so you have little baby trees and huge trees but 
it looks more realistic if the trees are varying heights like the trees normally would be. And just another quick thing that you can do, if you say you have a bunch of trees and you want to delete them, you can click anywhere on the terrain that's near the trees, shift click somewhere else so you highlight the entire piece of terrain that the trees are on. You can right click, select objects on selected terrain, and then if you right click it again, delete selected objects, you have the choice of deleting all selected objects or just deleting the trees. So I'm just going to delete the trees. So now the trees are gone but my model would stay there. Um, one last thing that you can use this, or no, I should actually do a model. So let's do a model. So let's put um, a street light in. So I have a street light here. I'm going to do a highway lamp. I guess it really doesn't matter. So we'll start new. We'll start this on position number. We'll put 50 of them. Start position zero. And we'll put this on the left side of the road because we haven't done anything on the left yet. Okay, close. And now there's our street lights on the left hand side of the road. And they're spaced, and that will go down the entire length. So it's very easy to take one model and quickly populate your entire scene with them or, or road. And now once you have this in here, say you wanted this to be in the center of the road. Then we would change the offset to be, I already know what the width, the width of my road I believe is 7.9 meters in each direction. So if I offset this 7.9, apply the group, Okay, then I'm directly in the center, and now if, say, this was in the center and it wasn't just a dotted line, you obviously wouldn't want it like that. You'd want it rotated 90 degrees. And now the models are rotated 90 degrees and all in the center. The other thing, the other, the DH is the delta height. So if you, this say this is too tall and you don't, you can just minus this, say, a meter, apply to group, and then it'll lower it down. Or you can do it per object. So now that I, ju I could just raise this one up four meters, up just apply to this single one, and I could change the rotation, the offset, the distance, anything just on one single meter or one single lamp. And you can also just delete one. So if you, ever, if you lay a bunch down and you only want to delete certain ones, you can click on them individually and click delete. If you click delete group, it'll obviously delete all of them. So that's how you would place th that kind of object. Another way of, do of doing this would be, in other models that's, that's very useful to quickly make a scene would be power poles. So if I do a power pole, same thing, right, group, we'll make the number f four just to show you spacing, start position zero, that's fine. Okay, close. Now we have some power poles here. Now, group power lines. This is another thing that we can do. So now that we have these four here, if I click make power lines, it's going to make them across these all of these power lines. Now, now it, that quickly created power lines along my four things, and you can also change the. These are the. These are four different lines I have going across these. So, say I only wanted three lines, or I wanted to change. I think I can delete these individually. That's not giving me the delete button, but you can change the thickness of the line. So that is the one that I'm changing right now. And I just deleted actually that pole instead of that power line, so that delete is not the correct one, but here we go. Now if I if I now I have the four lines ba basically here. So now I can remove individual lines if I wanted to. So now that removed that line. You can actually change the distance, the thickness, the color of the power lines. So now one of them should be purple. So you have a lot of options with with just making quickly making s realistic things on your road like street lights and power poles and power lines with this group editor. One last thing that we frequently use it for, I'm going to fly over to this area.
and I quickly have just made a bridge section that has a bridge section that lines up. There's no, I didn't put any sort of barrier on here, but you can see that there's a concrete bridge section under this and another road right here. So I'm going to want to put, if I wanted road pillars in to, to hold this bridge up, I would alt click the road where I wanted to start them. So alt click position 3209 and it ends at about position 43. So it's about a thousand meters that I want them on. So I'll go back to my roadside object editor. I'll go to models, find my, my pier, which is right here, and make a new one. The distance, I'm gonna make a group. The start position was about 3,200. Spacing every 100 meters. Actually, probably spacing every, yeah, let's just do 100 meters and 10. And then that should, if I, okay, close this. Now you can see that, that obviously these are in the wrong spot. But it had put, put 10 of them almost all the way down. So now if I click on one of them, I will offset this by 7.9, apply to the group, and that will move it to the middle. I'll rotate by 90, apply to the group. And then I'll drop the DH. I don't actually know how tall this is. So I'm just going to guess at this until I get it right. Oops. Wrong choice. Got to be negative to go down. Okay, that was actually pretty close. Negative 11. No, probably negative 17. And we can also do it uh, manually too. So there you have it. And now close this and now we have road piers all along our our bridge and done with the group editor. Thank you.